Today we're talking document templates and more specifically, the six ways you can create document templates within a SharePoint online site. I've come across many creative ways of adding templates to document libraries. So today we're going to look at six of the most common. There'll be some good, some bad, and some definitely ugly. So let's set the scene, okay? case. So let's say we own and manage a YouTube channel. And as part of managing that channel, we need to come up with video ideas. And naturally, because we're smart, organized, and amazing human beings, we're going to store these ideas within a SharePoint site. Now we want to capture these ideas in a very consistent manner. So the natural next step would be to have a video idea template. So with that being said, let's go to step one on our template meter which is going to be where we just simply add a document to a library and call it template. This video is sponsored well by me and the Academy 365 SharePoint Site Builder Masterclass. This is a course that I've put together which is for anybody who has inherited a SharePoint online site or is building a department site within their internet. The course focuses on the most common requirements that I see again and again and step by step how to build them. There's a big focus on user experience within this course, and I've designed it so you don't have to be a techie to take it, right? This is aimed at any business user who wants to up their game within SharePoint. If you're interested, there's a link below along with a tasty discount. Now back to the video. So we can see here we're in our potential Oscar nominees uh, document library here, and we have a file added here, and we've just simply called it video idea template. Now this is ground zero. This is the most basic way to do it. Uh, a lot of people do it, me included, but there are some problems with this, which is why I don't do it anymore. The main problem for me is that what people will tend to do is even though you've labeled your document a template, people are gonna open this document and they're gonna edit it and you're gonna spend a lot of time backing out changes or re-uploading a fresh version of the template. And in an attempt to combat this, a lot of people will shoehorn in some instruction into the title such as do not edit, please but people will not listen, they will edit your template and you will cry. Okay, so level number two would be to combat that, we could actually change the permissions of the files so we can leave it in place as it is, but we can make it so that us as site owners are the only people who can edit this. So to change the access on our file, we wanna select the file, we wanna to go to information, we're gonna say manage access, and within here we can see the three groups that we have by default, owners, visitors, and members. And what we might want to do is change this one so that the visitors can only view the document. So to do that, we're gonna click here, we're gonna click here, and then we're gonna change this to view. We'll click apply, and now we'll see that the only people who can actually edit this document are the owners of the site. And that will stop the general user in here who could typically edit from not being able to edit this template. Now this is better than level one, but, but it's still not perfect in my mind in that if someone wants to use this template, they're gonna to have to make a copy of it or download it and re-upload it. So it's still a disjointed user experience, but certainly an improvement on level one. Another issue with having your templates embedded within the list of files within your library is that as you add more files to it, your video template may get lost in the mix. And it might be obvious to people that it even exists here in the first place. So that leads us to level three, okay? So what we could do is to make this more visible within the library, it's a very simple step. We could just click the three dots here and we could say pin to top. And now that makes this template very visible to anybody who comes in here. We still have our edited permissions in place, so our template is pretty much safe as well from being edited. So those first three levels are the more ad hoc ways to add templates to a document library, but they're not the way that SharePoint wants us to add templates to document library. So on to step four, we look at the first method SharePoint provides us to add a template to a library. So many people aren't aware of this option but if I come up here to new and come down here to add template and then and then simply choose the template file I want to upload so I'm going to choose this one click open and now that means that when I click new again I'm going to see an option for video idea template and that means that when anyone clicks this our template file will open up and it will open up as a new document so someone can call it idea one and it's saved and they can work away on it without having to actually edit an existing file or copy or paste or download. So a much handier option for people. Now this is great. The only thing is that it's very local to this document library. So the templates I add in this manner are only applicable to the library I've added them to. That leads us to level, level number five, which is how do we make a document template available anywhere within our site? And the answer to that is going to be through content types. So we've covered content types a few times on this channel, but we've never looked at the template aspect of it. So what we'd want to do is we'd want to come up to the cog and we'd want to go to site information, view all site settings. And this is where we can find an area in here called site content types. We want to click into that. And this is where we're going to manage content types local to our site. So what you want to do is you want to say create content type. We'll give it a name. So we're going to say A365 video template doc. We'll leave it in custom content types, although you could add your own custom category if you wanted to. 
In here, under pairing category, we're going to choose document content types. And under the content type itself, we're going to choose document as well. So that sets up the base level content type of a document, which is what we want. Then I'm going to click create. And when I'm in here, this is at the point where if I wanted to add any metadata to our template content type, I could absolutely do that. So in level four, we were able to just add the document as a template and it would inherit the metadata of the library. This is where we could specify our own metadata structure specific for this document type. So once we have our content type here, we want to go to advanced settings, and this is where we can specify a template for the content type. So I'll go to upload a new document template, click upload, video template, open, and now save. Okay, so now we have this content type available to be used on our site, and then we just add it to any library we want to use it with it. So back in our library, what we want to do is we want to say add column, scroll down to the bottom and say add a content type, click next and under choose content type we have our a365 video template doc so I'm going to select that and click apply and choose SharePoint magic when I click new I have a a365 video template doc which works very similar to what we had in our previous example so I'll click it and again I'm going to get this blank document that I can add my idea to let's call this idea 2 and we come back in here and then we can see idea two is in here. Now you notice that idea one, I created through the local library template. If I click that and click the information, I get the metadata applied to it that I have within the library because it's using the base content type of the library of document. Whereas idea two, if I click the information in there, it doesn't have the columns that I've added to the library because it's its own defined content type. So if you're gonna do the content type method, add the metadata columns to it when you're setting up the content type as you'd like to use it within the library. So a little bit of forward planning on this, but it'll be worth it because this content type can be used anywhere within this site. And level six then is building on level five. And the use case is more along the lines that we as an organization want to provide a more generic template for the company. So that might be a corporate PowerPoint presentation template or a Word document, that kind of a thing. Um, and you might want to make this available within all sites within your tenant. And essentially the way we do that is the same as level five, except where we do it matters more. So for a content type created locally within the site, it's available for use within that site. But if we want to make a content type available across all sites, we got to do it from the SharePoint admin center. Now this option can be very useful if you manage the provisioning of sites or the provisioning of sites is managed within your tenant, because as part of provisioning a new site, you can have the content type added to it, which means it'll always just be there for the people to use. So what you want to do is you want to come to the admin center, go to the SharePoint admin center, go to content type gallery, and we follow the exact same steps we used in level number five, where we're going to create a content type. We're going to enter in the name, add the category, parent content type, and the content type, and then we will add in the document. Um, and it's exactly the same as level five but you'll be able to add it to any site within your tenant. So there you have it. That's my six levels of document template within SharePoint Online. I hope you found this useful. Um, I've certainly used all of these methods over time, but you know, as I've gotten more comfortable with SharePoint, I've leaned more towards level four, five, and six, as I've suffered pain with the first three over time. And of course, this is just talking about adding the templates to a library. You might want to build the user experience on top of this, and you might want to make a resources area available within your site and link to templates within there, which is of course possible. But that's just me and my experience. How about yourself? Have you done templates in any other weird and wonderful way? If so, let me know in the comments below. Or if I could do things differently, also let me know. I am a mere mortal at the end of the day. So I hope you found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. And until next time, see ya.